Hello everybody, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Discworld 2. Well, we're in the home stretch. We're in the penultimate act. Death has been blown up. And we have to help him. Hmm, he made a dreadful death, but he might make someone a damn fine desk ornament. Murray, is that you? Ooh, I'm going! I'm going! Oh, here I go! I'm still going, you know. All right, all right, something to fill up your hourglass. I'm working on it! Honestly, you think nothing was done around here without me? Once, just once, I'd like to see an adventure based on Rinse Win stays in bed and gets some kip while everyone else runs around and collects stupid objects on his behalf. Yeah, uh, one of the problems with this act is that it's not immediately clear what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I'm sure that this hat must be in fashion somewhere, which is the scary aspect of the whole wretched thing. No point, it's blown to shreds. New improved cork, the accessory with a million household uses. Okay, so we are able to get a cork off of that, but we have a sour glass. Odd. Why does death have an hourglass? A little redundant, I would have thought. Well, everything has its time. And actually, death didn't have an hourglass until he became more mortal in uh, Reaper Man, but that's never here nor there. That leads back to the disc world. All right. So we need to find sand to fill death's hourglass. Well, obviously that should lead us to, you know, the land of sun and surf over here. No, no, actually, that's uh, sun, surf, and prawns is that way. Wonder if Saint Ungulant might have some thoughts on doing this and what to do. Hello there, at the pole. Angus, Angus, there's someone at the pole. What? Well, put it down right now. You can give yourself a disease like that. Ah! Oh, there's a pyramid walking about on legs. Look, I don't want to be any bother. I'm just wondering why you're at the pole. Not to mention around the bend. Hermiting! It's all the uh, right. You no. no new dialogue to be found here. Well, that's it for now. I had hoped the wise man might uh, give us a hint. Because uh, I do, in fact, know where we're supposed to go next. But it's really, really confusing unless you talk to everybody earlier in the game and apply some lateral thinking that if you, in order to restore death, you need water from the Fountain of Youth, or magic involving the Fountain of Youth. You know, you have to fight death. And unless you talked to Yuri Jeller and got the whole conversation about there being a merchant who knows where the Fountain of Youth is, well, you're just going to be wandering around the whole disc waiting for looking for a clue, waiting for something to happen. I'm in the mood for frogs. Yeah, frogs are the things I've been thinking of. But they're so small and green And they reign supreme In this crazy Casanander's house of love Oh, oh, oh! Ooh, much better! Yes, yes! Ooh, I like this one! Quite right! Plenty enough to go around! How'd you cook it? Sage and onions! Sage and onions? In the middle of the desert? Oh, too many rose water and onions then. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Whoops. Well, there goes Casanunda. I'd watch what happens next, but I'll probably be here for days. <sighs> and yes, this is in fact the merchant who was mentioned earlier. 
Not that we can see him or run into him or in any way interact with him. All we do is we see him get here and then we see him leave. And we need to ensure some way of being able to follow him. So how can we track him? Well, those vultures are still following us around. A pair of saddle, paired of course, so you can lose twice as many articles as if you were carrying a single. Okay, best loot the bags first. Hey, look, a canteen! All right, well, we'll go ahead and take that. And unfortunately, you have to be fast on this bit. Because we do need to plant the arm in his saddlebags, because otherwise... We can try following him. And you can see him wandering around the wasteland here, and the vultures are still following us. But try as we might, we can't quite follow him to his destination. So now we have to come back here, wait slightly off screen because it won't happen if you're with invisible earshot, not eye shot or whatever. Okay, but we have our arm at the ready. And yes, if you try and put the bag, or try and put the arm in the bag without taking the canteen out first, it'll say there's not enough room. And now, somehow we will be able to follow him because we can see the vultures following him much more easily than we can the camel and the man riding him. Look, I don't make these puzzles up, okay? I just play the game. Yes, right over there. Well, it'll sure make a change from bottled mineral water. Right. A pedestal. Mmm, I've always wanted to be placed on one of these. There's lots of sand in the bottom. The water is spurting up through a little hole in the base. Hmm, how do we stop the water? And now, we have some sand. Water. Well, it's wet, runs downhill, and you can see through it. Would you want a chemical analysis? I need something to put it in first. Yeah, and you actually can fill the canteen with water from this, but it doesn't do you any good. So, here we go. Yes, gratuitous 3D scene. Because back when this came out, the first 3D accelerator graphics cards were just coming out on the market, so having 3D animation in your game was a very big deal at the time. Hence why we're now getting this Terminator-esque scene of uh, Death reforming himself. Although the eyes are glowing red, but when we shift back to regular animation, his eyes are glowing blue, as they should be. 
Well, I say glowing, they look more like blue points. And yes, Rinsman decided to take a nap here in the middle of a desert. For no reason. And the assassin is here to kill him. For no reason. And Death is going to save Rincewin. Probably in appreciation for what just happened. Or... Oh, damn. I forgot to shout four. <sighs> the jokes are a bit obvious, aren't they? Epilogue. Queen Kong. Yeah, and I've increased the sound of the uh, sound effects volume for this. Since the whole bit with Death uh, doing his stand-up act in the last chapter was a little quiet. This seems oddly familiar. And yes, Rincewind is sleeping in the projectionist booth. Why he has to be here, just go with it. And of course, he is splicing in more footage of the Elven Queen. So apparently he did get demoted from assistant wizard to assistant projectionist. sure whether they spent enough on the script for this movie. It seems to be all just special effects. Hmm? Is it intermission yet? I was hoping for something nice and sticky on a stick. The only thing sticky around here is this finale. Get on with it! Yeah, for once I agree with the Arch-Chancellor and for some odd reason there's an elf in the crowd. Look at that lot! Like a school of guppies at feeding time. I'll get confused talking to anybody in this game, let alone a crowd. And there's also a bunch of uh, the Jelly Babians in the crowd because, of course, there oh, is. Oh, God! Sorry, got carried away again. I do hope the little fella's okay up there. I'll rescue him soon. So, uh. <laughs> Snappy for a rat man's trumpet. <laughs> Millennium hand and shrimp. Yes, it is very romantic, isn't it? Go on, bugger it. Front the biscuit for a sneaky trouser. I told them. You're just an old softy under that crust, aren't you? Of course, she is rather tall, but they do say size isn't important. Actually, they do make a beautiful pair, you know. <laughs> bugger it. I mean, the librarian and the giant. Do you think we should rescue him, Dean? Hmm? Um, well, I was just wondering if we might have to rescue... her. Perhaps we'd better just let nature take its course? Got a horse, did you say? How's he going to get it up that car with that big woman in the way? 
So yeah, this is pretty much taken directly from the end of the Terry Pratchett book, Moving Pictures, where the magic of Hollywood... Bladders! Get your bladders here! The magic of Hollywood winds up causing a giant woman to be formed from the screen, and it grabs the librarian and carries it up the side of the biggest tower at Unseen University, giving us a neat little reference to King Kong, only with a giant woman grabbing a helpless ape. Of course, it falls to us to play hero and solve this. Not that we really have much in the way of equipment to work with. And then, oh yes, the death of rats is here. Pretty Polly. Pretty Polly. My old mate Dibbler. It is my ultimate aim to convince him to sell himself off to the army for target practice. Undead, but still trying. Now, Granny isn't the sort who suffers fools gladly. As a suffering fool myself, I'll go along with it. Alright, well let's talk to Dibbler first, who's apparently selling bladders. Now that's free enterprise. You see, that's what makes this city great. A man's free to reuse the internal organs of dangerous fauna in any way he sees fit, no matter what the health department says. Bladders! Get your bladders here! Only a groat apiece, and even then I'm cutting my own throat! Bladders? Are you taking the pit? Bladders? Bladders, my friend, a rustic forerunner of the more familiar rubber balloon, as enjoyed by children. This is absolutely true. Who says computers aren't educational? I've got sheep bladders, vole bladders, moose bladders. You want a bladder? I'm your man. You know, I believe you. You can do other things besides blow them up, you know. Oh, dozens of uses a good bladder. Although, right now, I admit I can only think of uh, one or two. Uh, well, uh, one, really. Animal bladders. That's right, Squire. There's toys for children. Wonderful idea, eh? Look, do you really think this is an appropriate part of an animal's offal to be counting about as a child's toy? Well, I suppose you're right, sir. But the stomach gets used for haggis, and the intestines get used for sausage skins. Wait, brilliant! There's one bit no one ever uses. I can get hold of a pile of them right now. No, stop right there. This has gone far enough. Bladders, I can almost understand. But I will not allow you to run about giving children toys made out of... of... Skulls, sir. What's wrong with that? I can make little drums, castanets, little money boxes. Skulls? <sighs> oh, good, right. Well, that's okay then. You just go and sell some animal skulls later on. It'll have to be later, Squire. I'm still trying to shift all those animal colon footstools I made up yesterday. All right. I'd like to buy some bladders, please. Certainly, Squire. Now then, what sort? We've got your rat, uh, your vole, that's the field vole, meadow vole, and the killer clatchian vole. The killer vole? Oh yeah, you know the ones, six feet long, covered in poisonous spines, with incisors like chisel blades. But I thought voles were sweet little things, you know, small and brown and covered with fur. Not these ones, sir. Take your arm off in an instant. They've levelled old continents, obliterated ships filled with puppies, baby kittens and innocent nuns. Wait a minute, these look like sheep bladders. It comes to something when a poor sheep is finding its essential organs floating around as kiddies balloons. Sheep, sir? Never, sir! Catch me arming sweet little creatures with curly wool and big brown eyes? Nah, not on my life. Cut me own throat if I tell a lie. These have been taken from Clatchian voles. A life form so foul, sir, so venomous, so putrid and psychotic that the hunters, sir, the hunters were all awarded medals for services to humanity. Clatchian voles is like rabid sharks on legs, sir. Oh, well, that's all right then. In that case, give me some of them. Right you are, Squire. I just hope they have time to go to the lavatory first, though. <clears throat> all right. So as Dibbler said, these were used to make water balloons. So we now have... Animal blenders filled with water. We could be onto something here. I don't know what, but something. Okay, so we now have a weapon of sorts, but we need a way to get up to the top of the tower. 
Now, Granny has a witch's broom, which naturally lets you fly, but I doubt she's just going to let us have it. Bladders! Get your bladders here! Waiting to see me get croaked, is she? Only the fact that this is the last scene of the game makes me refrain from saying something really acidic. Hello there, young man. Having a good day? This is clearly some attempt at sarcasm. Haven't you got anything better to do than sit here all day? Well, it's not every day I get to see a man torn to pieces by a giant elf. Oh, yes. Point taken. Are you sure this is where you want to be? I mean, it's not exactly safe, is it? I don't know. The safest place seems to be wherever you are. I heard all those comments you made about the animation budget, you see. She's right there, you know. Alright, well... You can swap minds with this raven, can you? Yes, I'm very good at it. Oh, go on. You can't possibly manage to put all your knowledge and experience into that tiny little avian brain. <laughs> of course I can. Just watch. What a clever woman. Clever, yet oddly dumb. Yeah, they dumbed Granny Weverwax down a fair bit for this uh, part of the game. Well, we have ourselves a maroon, we got ourselves some get weapons. Your bladders here. I'm going to do a quick save here because the next part of the game, uh, I know for a fact the sound balance is run primarily through the sound effects volume so hopefully I'm gonna have the mix right so we can actually hear it this time but if not I'll come back and reshoot it and you'll be none the worse. Bladders! Get your bladders here! Except I told you but you'll at least know why there's a cut. Anyway onward and upward! supposed to rest in peace you know run it's a falling giant woman and that's another thing in my day girls were sweet demure little thing not 60 foot tall monsters like you apparently get now and i'm also pretty sure that in my day they all actually wore something under the sometime later so, it's you at last, is it? So where do you think you've been? Sorry, it's been a bit of a confusing week. Confusing? I've been undead since half past ten on Tuesday morning. I mean, I wouldn't complain, but I lost 17 pence just on blowfish since I died. You'd think the afterlife would be cheaper, wouldn't you? Well, I've said sorry, haven't I? Come on, let's have a curry before we go. My treat. Ah, well, all right, uh, he's rather decent of you. By the way, I tried strangulation, drowning, poison, traffic accidents. I even listened to improvised jazz music. But that just made me wish I was dead. Or that the musicians were dead at any rate. How did I finally manage to go? You got sat on by a giant elven queen. Now there's one I never thought of trying. Still, if you gotta go... There's a place you're always welcome That's as nice as it can be Everyone can get in 
Cause it's absolutely free That's death No need to take a breath Just lie around all day With not a single bill to pay Hooray, that's death No more sicknesses or flu If you've lived beyond your means You can die beyond them too Boo-hoo Well, the greatest and the finest mm, Have already died Why not simply join them On the other side That's death Say farewell to all your bills Rip up all your wills And pop your final pills Amen That's death It's a tater tate with haze If you're not feeling great Then it's the best way to lose weight Mate Nothing here to hurt you No one's here to nag Come die with me If your life's a drag That's death The wealthy and well-bred All of them are here And that is Discworld 2. I uh, hope you don't mind me staying silent for the repeat of the theme, but uh, I think the Eric Idle singing is probably the best part of the game. Now, don't get me wrong, this game isn't all bad, but it's definitely a step down from the first game. I mean, the animation is nominally better, but that doesn't make the animation good. And I think the jokes about how they increase the animation budget but cut funding for everything else uh, may not have been a joke. Because the writing isn't quite as strong. It feels there's a lot more humor based around, you know, random Monty Python style humor and Monty Python in jokes rather than actual Discworld, you know, type humor even though it did include a lot of references. But um, that was Discworld 2. I hope you've enjoyed going through this as much as I have taking you through it. And I will see you all at the next adventure. Until then, take care. <laughs>